want to welcome you in to Wildcat Stadium here at Elgin High School. Today's match between your Elgin Wildcats and the Pflugerville Connolly Cougars. My name is Jake Herman. Thanks for joining me today here on Vibe Live. As Connolly tries to do the double over the Elgin Wildcats after winning the reverse fixture back in February. Meanwhile, the Wildcats coming off of their first district win of 2021 trying to keep the momentum alive. Last time out, the Wildcats were pretty dominant in a 3-1 victory over the Cedar Creek Eagles. That game was on Wednesday. Meanwhile, the Cougars sitting at sixth place in the district, coming off of a couple of draws back-to-back, -back, trying to keep themselves competitive in the playoff chase. tried to play it up. Intercepted well by Pedro Tellez. And the Wildcats win a throw. Cool controls in the center. Can't quite connect with Lane Eckert. Eckert, who was not available in the last game for the Wildcats, but scored in Friday's loss against Maynard. Now the pressure from Memo Hernandez giving Connolly some trouble. Ryder Michael wins it in the center. Anthony Jones played ahead for Grandes. district just a year ago, but only one returning starter from that squad, and the inexperience has showed at times for Connolly this season. They've been on the wrong end of a couple of one-goal losses recently. Along the right wing, Diego Garcia. Luis Rodriguez pressures. Effort from distance is handled by David Macedo. It's just over the bar. Ambitious there from Jose Camarena as the Cougars mount some early pressure. It was 7 0 the score that Connolly won by in the reverse fixture. But since then, the Wildcats have been playing much better. Garcia on the Another effort from distance. Doesn't really challenge. Well done defensively. For Elgin, Luis Rodriguez was there, the left back. Coach Ronnie Michael's squad looking to build up some momentum as we head down the stretch of the season. This the penultimate home game 
on the schedule for the Cats. Who will close out their home schedule on Tuesday against Bastrop. Anthony Jones kicks off the line, and you can see there's a stiff breeze blowing it back his way. Leads to a Connolly chance. Alan Vences Salgado had it for a moment in a promising spot. Instead, it's played back for Tan Win. In the middle, Donahue. Neatly done. Onside play. Garcia at the edge of the box is challenged by Macedo, who takes an aggressive line, and it pays off. The freshman in net, Macedo, stopped 10 Cedar Creek shots in the win on Wednesday. They'll need him to step up once again this evening. Salgado tried to lay it off for Garcia. Couldn't connect. Donahue on the left flank. Donahue with a cross and unable to get ahead to it that time was Olalde. Goal kick. But the Wildcats struggling early. Hemmed in in their own end through the first 10 minutes of this match. Hernandez's ball finds Grandes. Traffic in the middle. And a chance on the counter for the Cougars. Emmanuel Garcia played in for Donahue. Pedro Tellez on the defense. Cougars knocking it around the middle. Nice run in for Tan. His effort is taken care of by Macedo. Curler from distance, and with the tailwind at its back, it had some late rise to it. Already three early saves for Macedo. Nothing doing offensively for the Wildcats. They've been in their defensive half throughout. Garcia strong on the ball. Excellent through ball played in, and the Cougars have drawn first blood. Neatly taken, great through ball from Garcia. Sets up the game's first goal. Visiting Cougars, 1-0. It was Alan Vences Salgado who put it away. And much like the last time these two teams met, it is Connolly off to a fast start. 12th minute goal. Memo Hernandez in on the counter as his shot blocked. Vences Salgado has it taken away Anthony Jones. Jones with a through ball. Harbin Grandes runs it down. Grandes has won a throw. Harbin Grandes, who scored the third and final tally for the Wildcats in their win on Wednesday. It was a second half goal for Grandes, and it came at a big moment. Elga had a 2 0 lead at that point in the match. Grandes made it three and really took the life out of the Cedar Creek side. Elgin with 11 goals in district play. Seven of them have come against the Cedar Creek Eagles. 
Meanwhile, Julio Villa can't quite receive that service from Eckert. Jones wins the ball and plays back for Juan Mendoza. Macedo's kick. Took a bounce off of Eckert. Through ball played in. And a chance once again for Connolly. Garcia is tackled by Memo Hernandez and earns a free kick. Looks like Aaron Olalde will take it. service into the box and an Elgin defender got ahead to it corner kick for the Cougars is their second on the young match and right now it's just survival for Elgin trying to keep this lead from being doubled side that's without their starting goalkeeper today due to COVID. Trying to keep the ball in the offensive third. Corner played in. And Macedo is there. Service from Arnold Torres Colindres came a bit too close to the freshman keeper. Oh, trouble at the back here. Jones with a good second effort on the clearance. And now here's Eckert. Uh, Giving away cheaply. Connolly in pretty consistent possession of the ball. Nicely done through ball onside. No, offside. <laughs> Late call there. Colin Donahue's run was a bit too early. Try to play that ball in for Julio Villa. Haven't called his name much in the first 15 minutes of this match, which is generally not a great sign for Elgin. As a substitution is made, the captain, Diego Garcia, sits for Connolly. Luis Webster Gomez enters. But in general, Julio Villa, somebody that needs to be involved for the Wildcats. He's on the ball right here, had a brace. In Wednesday's match against Cedar Creek, Ryder Michael continues the attack. Martinez's ball to Hernandez. Jones. And play stop for an injury. Clock will come to a pause. Elgin Soccer here on Vibe Live, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. As the Cougars got on the board first here in the 12th minute, if you're just joining us. Alan Vences Salgado with the goal. His first on the season. Had an assist the last time that these two teams played, and today he's on the board with a goal. time the teams met the 7-0 result for Connolly it was Arnold Torres Colindres with two goals and an assist Luis Webster Gomez same thing two goals and an assist Olalde scored one Spike Walker scored one Colin Donahue tucked one away as well 
in a game that Connolly took control of early and never looked back. They've had the upper hand early in this match. Four shots for the Cougars and one goal. Nothing offensively for the Cats just yet. Maybe this stoppage will give them a chance to regroup as we hope the injured player for Connolly is okay. A couple of teams that have seen their depth reduced to nearly none. Elgin won yesterday with just 13 men on their roster. When players would exit for injury or yellow cards, they'd be down to 10 men for stretches of play. But they were able to overcome all of that on Wednesday night and grab that first win of district play. Check, check. Up the flank come the Cougars. Webster Gomez pressured onto the touchline, but he wins a corner. On this ball, played into the middle. Elgin out on the counter. But that attack fizzles out, defended neatly by Juan Marmolejo Lopez, the left back. Ryder Michael continues to pressure the ball. Comes out to center, where Webster Gomez is the first one to it. Webster Gomez turns, switches the play to Donahue, who can't keep it in, goes over the touchline, Elgin throw. Now it's played out wide to Luis Hernandez. Chasing it down is Olalde, and he's won another Connolly corner. Already the fourth corner that the Cougars have won. See if they can double the advantage. It's dealt with by Memo Hernandez. Follow-up effort. Taken by David Gauna Garcia, who didn't get a lot of it. Cougars continue to play it forward. Webster Gomez turning. Defended well. Ball played into the box. And it's punched over the bar by Macedo. The effort from Vences Salgado, who was looking for his second. 
Remember, he scored back in the 12th minute. Got his first of the season and hungry for more. Good, re good uh, reflexes by Macedo. Another Cougars corner. Played in by Donahue to the far post. Headed flick nearly back into the danger zone. And Macedo will catch this effort from distance. And try to find Julio Villa. Luis Hernandez to Memo Hernandez. We'll see if the Wildcats can now establish a little bit of possession. Give their back four a break. Luis Hernandez overruns the ball. Cougars treading forward until they're forced back by Peyton Moss. Connolly team in search of their first away win of the season. They've had two draws on the road. Haven't been able to come up with an outright victory. Chance to do that today here in Elgin. Now this is a through ball to set up Webster Gomez on the right wing. His cross into the box and a headed effort missed wide. Cougars continue to look dangerous. Fences Salgado with yet another quality chance. Not a lot of momentum going forward for Elgin. Maybe they can catch Connolly here on the counter. Tellez wins the ball to Hernandez. Neatly done there by Tellez. Tellez turns. Looking for Villa. Villa on a one-touch pass. Couldn't connect with Tellez. This play is onside, but Macedo is all the way out to handle it. This time, Tellez will connect with Villa. And on the handball... Possession goes back to Connolly. And a quick restart. Perhaps too quick. Macedo is ready for it. Cougars trying to get creative offensively. Probably feel they should be up more than 1 0 at this point. Credit to Macedo and the Elgin back four for keeping them in it to this point, but got to start getting something going positively. Maybe this is the moment. Memo Hernandez with a through ball. But nobody on the receiving end. This play is onside. Up ahead, Vences Salgado. Into the box. Webster Gomez tucks it away. 2-0 to the visitors. Some Elgin defenders contesting that play was offside. But the referee has pointed to the center spot. 2-0 to Connolly. You can hear Anthony Jones, the center back for Elgin, frustrated at the miscommunication with both the teammates and the officials. Looked like one of the Wildcats... Kept the play on side. A conversation going on between Macedo and Jones, and a mistake at the back proves costly. Credit Connolly, though, on the attack. It is a 25th minute goal put away by Luis Webster Gomez, who now leads the team with five goals on the season. Assist went to Vences Salgado, who's having himself an excellent first half here today with both a goal and an assist. Something about playing these Wildcats gets Vences Salgado going. He's got...
three points on the year. All three of them against the Cats as a throw in violation. Sends it back to Elgin, who wins another throw. Memo Hernandez. Lost the ball. Torres. Works it up ahead. Mendoza. Looking for Tellez. That's last touched by Pedro Tellez. Cougars at 3-9-4 and four in district play. Elgin at 1-10. and 10. Nice challenge there by Luis Hernandez. Forces Connolly to put it over the touchline. Getting late in the first half here. On a beautiful evening for soccer here at Wildcat Stadium, I'm Jake Herbin with you on the call. As Connolly has been on the ball early and often this evening. Looking to make it three, turning into the box. Torres Colindres was maybe one touch away from having a good shot at the goal. Dealt with in the end by Jones. Hernandez's ball. Can't connect with Tellez. Good to see some fans in the stands today. As Julio Villa plays it up ahead. Grandes was chasing after it. Tellez runs it down along the left wing. Played back for Memo Hernandez. Rodriguez. Eckert with a one-touch pass. Villa turning onto his left foot. Julio Villa has it taken away from him by Vinicio Garcia Osorio. And now quickly the other way, Vences Salgado. Salgado tried to cut into the box. From distance, Macedo dealt with it nicely corner will be the sixth for Connolly. The goal for Luis Webster Gomez made it 2-0 and was his fifth on the season. And Elgin in this first half has just not been able to carry over the same positivity they generated in that win against Cedar Creek. And you can see the wind has been in their face the entire half. Both the corner flags have fallen over. From the far corner, service into the box. And that one... May have been affected by the wind as well, which is blowing left to right on your screen. That one never really entered the field of play. As Peyton Moss enters the game. Moss, who filled in as the keeper for a few minutes in that Cedar Creek match when Macedo left with an injury. That's last touch by Elgin. This is an onside play. Salgado with a neat move right around the keeper. And he's kept a cool head at the end. 3-0 Cougars. And Vences Salgado continues a dream afternoon.
Salgado, who was standing originally in an offside position, actually was able to take that ball and score because it was last touched by a Wildcat defender before it got to him. Oh, and quickly, Salgado's in again. And he's made it a hat trick. When it rains, it pours. 4-0. Macedo talking to his back line, saying, I need a little more help than that. Just too easy there for the Cougars, who strike quickly right off the restart. That'll please Coach Ryan Ford, who makes the substitution. And Coach Ronnie Michaels' message on the far touch line, just pick your head up, saying it's not over. whole lot of game left. Not the start Elgin wanted. 4-0 to Connolly. Luis Hernandez for the throw. Memo Hernandez on the ball. Has to wind backwards, eventually connecting with Mendoza. Mendoza looking for Villa. Julio Villa. Can't win it forward. And another counter-attacking opportunity. Webster Gomez into the box. Webster Gomez denied by Macedo, who came up with a big save there. But can Elgin mount some pressure here before the end of the half? Hernandez to Villa. Played along the right wing. Mendoza. Back to Villa. Villa weaving through defenders in traffic. Couldn't connect with Paid Moss. Back out to center for Tellez. Mendoza. Put a bit too much weight on that ball. Luis Hernandez gets it. Hernandez. to Luis Rodriguez, who's given it away. Jones trying to get forward. He can't. And an excellent through ball. But an offside one. Good idea there from Vences Salgado. Wanted to switch the play to Diego Garcia. But his run was a bit premature. Coming up on the final few minutes of our first half, about eight minutes to play in the half at the moment. Tellez looking for Harvey and Grandes. Grandes forces Connolly to play back to the keeper. The, back, the backup, Averill Houston, in today. He'll be tested here by Memo Hernandez. And he rolls it in at the far post. And from nothing, the Wildcats generate a goal. Perhaps a change of fortunes here. 
Long way to go in this match. And 4-1. to one. Hard working play there by Memo Hernandez. And could that be the spark that Elgin needed? Time will tell. Now a ball played offside. So already, five goals in this first half. Memo Hernandez gets around the keeper. Forced out to the right wing. Fires from distance. And just missing the near post. Lovely for Memo Hernandez over these last couple minutes. Trying to wheel Elgin back into the match. Good on him for challenging the keeper there. Luis Hernandez's ball. Connolly plays it in offside. A little bit better from the back line of the Wildcats here in recent minutes. Not letting those central forwards get in behind. Jones huffs it forward on the free kick. You can see the effect of the wind knocking that down. Kind of wonder what kind of effect the wind will have on the second half as the Wildcats will have it at their back. That ball's won well by Ryder Michael. Who can't turn with it. But it comes out to center for Luis Hernandez. Hernandez gets past one defender. Memo Hernandez tries to carry the attack forward. Hernandez, who's provided the life for Elgin in recent minutes. And a chance here in on the counter. Colin Donahue challenging Macedo. Macedo comes out to meet him. Donahue works it in around him and rolls it in. 5-1 to the visitors. Story of this first half has been Connolly on the counter. Giving the Elgin defense fits. And for a defensive side that was marvelous against Cedar Creek, today has not been their day thus far. Elgin appealing for a handball. It's not given. That one rolled off the back of Donahue. Cougars earn a throw. For Colin Donahue, it's his third goal of the season. Two of those have come against the Cats. Out into the middle. Olalde has won a free kick from the edge of the box. Olalde, who had two goals last time these two teams met. Looking to add a sixth first half marker for the Connolly Cougars. He'll discuss it with Emmanuel Garcia as Jones, Villa, and Rodriguez form the wall for Elgin.
Low driven ball finds the back of the net. Just blasted into the far lower left corner. Nothing Macedo could do. Free kick is clinically taken by Olalde. Cats earn a throw there. Off of the pressure from Peyton Moss. Luis Rodriguez will be the one to throw it in. Headed away by Luis Webster Gomez. as we near the final minutes of our first half. A couple of moments ago, it seemed as if Elgin was on their way back into this match. Memo Hernandez scored the lone goal back when it was 4-0, so that made it 4-1. And from there, he had another good chance, trying to make it 4-2. After that was dealt with by the Connolly defense, it was the counter-attacking goal of Donahue and the free kick of Alalde that have given Connolly some breathing room that might be enough to see them through, even though it is early in this match. Nearing the halftime, Marker, final minute. Villa played in nicely. Memo Hernandez into the box. And what a challenge that is. Juan Marmolejo Lopez likely saved a goal. A saving moment there for the Connolly defense. Potentially deflating for Elgin if they can't make anything out of this corner. Only 40 seconds to go in the half. Julio Villa will take the kick. With the wind blowing strongly, you can see the back of the net moving with the wind. Here's the ball in. Flicked on by Hernandez. Far post Rodriguez over the net. And that'll likely take us to the break. With only seven seconds to play in a first half that saw Connolly score just shy of the seven goals they put up in the reverse fixture. All Cougars in that first half. 6-1, the visitors lead. Back in a moment for some halftime stats. We'll tell you who scored the goals. And what to expect the rest of the way. I'm Jake Herbin. Thanks for joining me here on Vipe Live. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Vipe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals. 
academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. Time for team. Again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds. Philly really pulls up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VIPE.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEVYPE.com. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Rob. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to HighSchoolOfficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? 
It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back on a beautiful night here in Elgin. Cougars leading it 6-1 to one at the break over your Wildcats. Through 120 minutes now, play between these two teams on the season. Cats just haven't been able to find an answer for how to stop this Connolly team. Who put up seven goals in the first meeting between these two and already with six at the half coach Ronnie Michael who saw his team win their first district match of the season on Wednesday against Cedar Creek has to be a bit disappointed with the effort thus far but still a half to play and a chance for Elgin now to have the wind at their back and we'll see how much of a factor that really is Strong wind out on the field, gusting from left to right towards that net where Elgin will be shooting in the second half. And so we'll see if the Wildcats can take advantage. The rest of the way for Elgin, only two games to go after this one for the Wildcats. On Tuesday, March the 9th, they'll play their final home game of the season against Bastrop. That game will be at 5.30. And then on Friday the 12th, they will go at Hendrickson to close out the season against the Hawks. Meanwhile, that first half for the Cougars was a busy one. They were on the front foot early and often, and they got three goals from Alan Vences Salgado. Their central attacking midfielder today has scored three times, all from very close proximity to the net. Their leading scorer, Luis Webster Gomez, added a goal as well. It wasn't until the Cougars led 4-0 that Elgin got on the board on a Memo Hernandez goal. Hernandez nearly made it 4-2 before Connolly quickly countered the other way. Colin Donahue scored his third goal of the season to make it 5-1. And then after Aaron Olalde won a free kick from just outside the box, he blasted it into the lower left corner to get us to the where we are right now, 6-1 to one in favor of the Cougars. And we'll see who's going to step up for Elgin here in the second half. They got a brace yesterday or Wednesday, I should say, from Julio Villa. And Arbin Grandes added one as well. A team playing shorthanded today without John Boggs, without Dylan Zamorone, and without Nestor Martinez to this point in the action. A challenge that's nothing new for this Wildcats squad, but didn't stop them on Wednesday. Meanwhile, Coach Ryan Ford's bunch, who are just one year removed from going undefeated, one season removed, I should say, from going undefeated, winning district. Only one starter returning from that team, and it's been a, a lot of turnover for that bunch over the course of the season. They face some adversity that they maybe weren't used to. But this has to be an encouraging result for them here today to this point as coach Ford sends his team back out onto the pitch you heard him talk during halftime about the wind and how that's going to impact what his team is going to do telling them to clear it out to the sides work the ball up the pitch don't try to play it in long because 
As we saw in the first half, the wind can just knock those balls down dead in their tracks and cause a counterattacking opportunity the other way. Spike Walker is on the Wildcats' Elgin E, getting ready to get the second half going. Along the near touch line, David Garcia. Gets through the Lane Eckert challenge. And a through ball played in. Jones, the only one back in defense. And he does neatly with it. Tellez comes in to support. Well done there by the sweeper, Anthony Jones. Webster Gomez with his outside foot. Macedo couldn't quite handle it. Connolly earns a corner. Kind of a knuckler there. Corner played in. Macedo out with a punch. Eckert's clearance is not that convincing. Torres. Trying to muscle his way into the box. And Anthony Jones's clearance went off the back of Julio Villa. Another corner. This one played to the edge of the box and hit over the goal, through the goal post. Three points and a goal kick for Elgin. This ball is played up ahead. Julio Villa after it with pace. Who will win this first? Villa doesn't get there first, but he does win a corner. After Juan Marmalejo Lopez played it out, he had a saving tackle late in the first half. Second time he's denied Villa of a clear goal scoring chance. He's been perhaps Connolly's best defender so far today. Cougars who have been pretty solid defensively in recent games. Trying to hold Elgin to just one here this evening. Temperatures dropping. As this corner ball is played in. Dealt with by the pack heel of Win. Another corner. Yeah, it was about 75 degrees will be kicked off this evening at 5.30. Temperatures now down to 68, but the wind gusting. As the sun sets, the lights start to take their effect. This corner is played short. Now a delivery into the box. Misses wide, left of the woodwork. Cougars playing without goalie Alan Gonzalez today. Avril Houston is in net. He's done what's been asked of him so far. Only the one goal allowed to Memo Hernandez. Already a little bit better from Elgin in the midfield to start off this second half. Right there, though, the Cougars win the ball and start the counter. Spike Walker, from distance, is handled easily by Macedo. 
Davi Macedo, the freshman, punts it high in the air, and the wind at his back. Villa wins the ball and draws a foul. With the wind at his back, a free kick for about 32 yards out. Jones, Hernandez, and Villa will discuss. Five defenders form the wall. From distance, the effort is hit up into the air by Averill, who goes over the end line. Averill Houston, that is, in net. Corner. Third corner of the half for Elgin, who have been much better to start this second half. Substitution. Ryder Michael re-entering the match for the Wildcats, replacing Peyton Moss. Villa takes the corner. Played low. Hernandez settles it down. Michael a shot is blocked. Wildcats continue to press forward. Villa with a heavy touch. And he commits the foul. That foul was won by Jose Camarena. Torres. To Garcia. Back to Torres. Left wing. Can't quite turn into the box. It was cleared by Mendoza. Eckert clears it nicely. Grandes with some space. Closed down. And kicked forward by Luis Hernandez. Villa pressures and wins the ball. Julio Villa is denied by Houston. An effort from the left edge of the box was parried aside. And perhaps the best save of the evening so far for the Connolly keeper. Encouraging words coming from the far touch line. And Coach Ronnie Michael. As the Cats look to get a little bit closer. Excellent through ball from the back half. Followed up by a nice one-two. Vences Salgado with a nice touch. Webster Gomez on the far side. Played into the middle where it's won nicely by Garcia. Who couldn't get past Jones. Good challenge there by Ryder Michael as well. Wildcats win a throw and come away with it quickly. Through ball to Memo Hernandez, who settles it neatly with a back heel touch. Played to Luis Hernandez. Ryder Michael switching the play. All the way down to Tellez. Can he run this one down? No, he cannot. Thought that went over the touch line, but we keep playing. Tellez has it. Plays it into the box. Headed aside by Walker. As some substitutes warm up for the Cougars. Tellez will throw.
Into the box for Villa. Tries to turn with it. Luis Hernandez wins the ball. Ryder Michael. Does well in traffic there. Michael still on the ball. Nicely done. Good technique there by Michael. Helps Elgin keep possession. Pretty creative there in the middle. Memo Hernandez turns. Would have been a difficult finish had he got his left foot around to it. A lot of positives in these first 10 minutes for Elgin. Just not a goal to show for it just yet. Villa and Hernandez have had the chances. Jones with a nice header. Mendoza. And a foul in the middle. Tellez gets whistled. Foul was drawn by Olalde, who scored the free kick to give Connolly their sixth and most recent goal, which came in the closing moments of our first half. Tellez with a nice clearance. Ryder Michael on the ball. Strong on the ball, that is. Hernandez played up to Eckerd, who laid it back for Tellez, and Tellez wasn't quite ready for it. Tough break there for Elgin. Nicely won in the middle by Vences Salgado, whose hat trick got the scoring started for Connolly this evening. Jones pressed and won the ball. Tellez to Michael. Michael has been a calming presence out on the pitch today. He's been able to possess the ball, slow the game down just a little bit for Elgin. The speed of Connolly has given them problems. It's something that his dad, Coach Ronnie Michael, said before the game is Wildcats didn't really want to get into a running game, an end-to-end -end game with these Cougars, but unfortunately for Elgin, the Cougars have turned it into just that at times, and they've been ever so dangerous on the counter. That's what's contributed to the 6-1 scoreline. Throw in here for Connolly. Give it away. Pedro Tellez. Nicely headed by Eckert. Villa couldn't find it in time. Connolly in quickly on the counter. Salgado. Curling effort, and the rebound is put away for a goal. The initial effort was curling towards the far post. And Macedo dealt with that one, but not the rebound. Cougars have now matched their total from the first time these two teams met with seven. And the play restarts. Nice ball up ahead to Villa. Turns and looks for Harbin Grandes. Grandes runs it down. Back to Julio Villa. One touch. Hernandez to Mendoza. 
Switches to play. Mendoza from a long distance. And Juan Mendoza may be a bit too ambitious on that strike. The message from Coach Michael, stay positive. On a night where things have not gone, the Wildcats wet. Does not look like they'll be able to build off the momentum of that 3-1 to one win against Cedar Creek. But maybe in this second half, they can take some positives and apply it to their next match on Tuesday, which will be their home finale against Bastrop. Connolly, who have seen a lot of games get away from them late this season. Lost a lot of games by one goal. Coach Ford saying that some of the inexperience may be contributing to some late game mistakes. I don't think that's going to be an issue for them today. The way they've come out and finished their chances. Great composure as they've neared the box. And right there, just too many numbers. Macedo made the initial save, but the Cougars were right there for the rebound. Julio Villa wins the ball to Ryder Michael. Mendoza, one touch pass is beautiful. Up ahead, Grandes in pursuit. Forces the keeper, Houston, to play it out over the end line. Out of the bounds. Over the touch line, I should say. Cross into the middle isn't dangerous. Emmanuel Garcia dealt with it convincingly. Tellez keeps Connolly from getting the counter started. Jones, the last line of defense at the back. Can't connect with Villa. Eckert trying to run it down. But the ball is won by Vences Salgado. Alan Vences Salgado. Wins a throw. Tellez puts it forward, a good effort, but Villa never really found the running lane. Camarena played it back, a little bit of trouble at the back here for Connolly. They'll concede the throw. Villa, from distance, missed it wide. Never really found the target. Had the right amount of power, but just to the right of that far post. Nice challenge by Vesce Salgado. Luis Hernandez tried to connect with him, but now it's Memo Hernandez in purple coming away with it. Memo Hernandez near the far post has his cross blocked by Win. Cats win a corner. Already their fourth corner in the second half. They had just one in the first half, and it came really late. Back to Memo Hernandez. Looking to play the ball in. He does, but Ryder Michael can't get around on it. Via from distance. Over the crossbar. It hits the goal post. Goal kick. Elgin attack looking to find its bite. 
They've had the possession for large runs of play here in this second half, but they haven't been able to turn it into a goal. Cats win a throw. Tellez. With a hard challenge there, both players feeling the brunt of that one. The foul is eventually given against Connolly on the play. So Tellez actually wins a free kick with his hustle. Nicely done. Halfway through our second half here on Vibe Live. Jones with the delivery into the box, all the way into the keeper's grasp. Jake Herman with you from the booth here at Wildcat Stadium. Nice touch by Camarena. Gomez to Garcia, who can't connect. Substitution. Looks like the first time we've seen Nestor Martinez enter the match for Elgin. Luis Hernandez, who's been active in the middle, makes a nice challenge, but Connolly with some clever passing to keep possession. Cougars can't quite connect up the left wing. They wanted David Gauno Garcia. Tellez with another strong challenge. He plays it forward. Hernandez pressures and wins the ball. Villa wins a throw. Gauna Garcia, the last to touch that one. Mendoza. Grandes lays it off. Villa turning. Edge of the box. Luis Hernandez with a chest. Memo Hernandez. Plays back to Jones. Connolly's had the answers at the back. Despite the sustained pressure from Elgin. Cougars' defense is held strong here in this second half, the only goal of the half belonging to the visitors. Villa, nicely done. Hernandez with an effort, blocked by a defender. Didn't get a whole lot of that second ball. Becomes a goal kick. He was set up nicely that time by Julio Villa, creative in the buildup. But it doesn't come to fruition. Little pressure here in the box from Tellez. Nearly wins the ball. That was how Connolly conceded their first goal. A little bit nonchalant at the back. Memo Hernandez wins a free kick in a dangerous area coming. Just about 20 yards out. Near the same spot where the Cougars scored their free kick. Back in the first half.
Coach Michael taking the opportunity to shuffle some of the positions as Villa and Memo Hernandez line up to take the kick. Looks like it'll be Memo Hernandez to take it as five different defenders form the wall for Connolly, although they are now told to back up by the referee. Chance for the Wildcats to nick one back. Memo Hernandez laid off for Michael, and his shot didn't get there. Cougars continue to put their bodies on the line defensively. Follow-up effort is ruled offside. Memo Hernandez with a courageous challenge and he will be rewarded by drawing the foul. Jones sets up quickly for the indirect free kick. This one's blasted into the box and just over the crossbar. That would have been something from about 50 yards out. Anthony Jones wanted to go for goal. Nestor Martinez subs out. Juan Mendoza subs back in. Cougars once again have a little bit of trouble at the back. They've been reluctant to punt the ball into the wind, which is understandable. But it does result for the second time already this half in an offensive chance for Elgin. Memo Hernandez. Low shot. Handled by Houston. And you can already see the effect that the wind is having on the punts. Jones. Couldn't quite connect with Eckert's run to the far post. Elgin just lacking the final touch in this second half. They've controlled, dare I say, dominated the possession. But have had a couple of their efforts be blocked in front of goal. Stuck on one. It was the Memo Hernandez goal back in the 30th minute. Remains the lone Elgin tally. Nice one-two into the middle now. Camarena lays it off. Garcia, Webster Gomez now. And he was challenged by Memo Hernandez before he had time to set up the shot. Donahue. And a foul whistled against Spike Walker. Cougars 
look to be on their way to their first road victory of the season. Grandes. Ball one back, Hernandez. Wildcats stuck on the outside looking in when it comes to the danger zones in front of goal. It's been a bend but don't break effort here in the second half for the Cougar defense. Jones with a long ball. Perhaps a little bit of impatience now from the Elgin attack. Final 10 minutes of tonight's match. Tellez, headed effort, flick on for Hernandez. Ball is won, though, by Vences Salgado. Only as far as Juan Mendoza. Julio Villa, curling effort, just misses the left post. Now a nice headed ball, nearly set up a good chance for Luis Hernandez. Instead, it's fought four and one back in the middle by Torres Colindres. Now Luis Hernandez with space. Through ball, Donahue. Tried to turn it back to his left foot and was dispossessed. One Luis Hernandez nearly dispossessed another. 30 in purple, 6 in white. Both named Luis Hernandez today. Nice ball into Spike Walker. And his shot. Didn't have too much on it. Macedo's ball. Carried by the wind all the way to his counterpart. Wildcats win a throw. Out to the side, Tellez pressures. Spike Walker, give it away. Hernandez, Mendoza, and a bad pass, taken the other way by Conley. Nice one-touch pass. Through ball was dealt with by Jones, played back to Macedo. Hernandez and Villa working together. Looks like Harbin Grandes getting set to re-enter the game. Lane Eckert takes a rest. Webster Gomez still on the ball for the Cougars. 
Ryder Michael, all out effort defensively. Via. Heads it to himself. And a nice challenge at the end by Walker. Grandes. Kept in play for the time being. Cougars eventually win a throw. Last five minutes of the match, rapidly approaching. Handball. Free kick to Conley. Who will improve to 4, 9, and 4 in district. Chance here on the counter via Julio Villa is denied. Story of the second half for Elgin. Everything but the finish. Did good did a good job there to take advantage of the heavy touch by the defender. Credit Luis Rodriguez as well. Or rather Luis Hernandez for his initial ball in. Corner has too much on it. Goal kick. Ryder Michael wins the ball. Memo Hernandez, his effort struck the post. After the keeper got a piece of it, and what a second half this has been for the Connolly defense. The last line of defense, I should say. Just did well to get a piece of that one and nudge it onto the post. Ryder Michael stays on the ball. Until it's eventually forced over the touchline. Final two minutes of action here from Wildcat Stadium. Via played into the box. Tellez can't get after it. Chance the other way, Spike Walker. Can't quite get around Mendoza. But he commits the foul.
ball in from Torres. All the way to the opposite side of the pitch. Where a cross will be dealt with. Defended well by Tellez. Check that. That was Nestor Martinez on the far side. Final 30 seconds. And sort of a chintzy little foul given there on Memo Hernandez. And oh, look at that. The wind forces the yellow card to fly all the way out of the official's hands. A yellow card given, I believe, to Memo Hernandez for the descent. So as the final seconds wind off the clock, the Connolly Cougars took control of this match early, never quite relinquished it, and they see it through to a 7-1 victory. For everyone at Vipe Live, I'm Jay Kerbin saying thanks for tuning in for tonight's broadcast of Elgin Soccer. We'll be back on the air. Tuesday night for the Wildcats men's soccer home finale against Bastrop. Until then, have a good night.